Lauren Allred, Never Enough. That's a song that made her famous without anybody knowing that it was her. How's it, guys? You're on Best to Hear. And we are, of course, analyzing on this channel singers and analyzing singers in America's Got Talent Fantasy League. So you might know, you might, you might have clicked on the video because Lauren is a singer that you loved listening to. Um, so you will know, but she was the voice behind the actress in the film, musical film, The Greatest Showman, who sang Never Enough. Um, and so in her first round in AGT here, she sang uh, The Fantasy League. She sang um, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, which I was just called Over the Rainbow, um, which I did an analysis on. Please click on the banner up here and you can check out that analysis of, of mine. Um, but now I saw that in the following round, she sang Never Enough. And the point is, my point when I saw that was, when is it enough? <laughs> right? I mean, that song is one of my all-time favorite songs from a modern-day musical. I just think it's brilliantly written. Um, but how many times can the original singer sing it and try to make it different? Right? It's not like, I mean, Rod Stewart or some other Sting or somebody who's had a career for 40 or 50 years. They still sing the songs sort of the same way they did when they were in their 20s and 30s. And they have to sing that song hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times because that's what people want to hear. But but with her now, um, in this context of, of these kinds of shows, she has to, every time, she has to try and make it different. So what is she going to do to make it different so that it's still amazing, but doesn't take anything away from the song? So that's my concern. So let's check it out together. Come on, nice shot. Hmm. I'm trying to hold my breath. Let it stay. This way can't let this moment in. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, that's interesting. She's singing at a semitone lower than the movie version or the version in the musical. So that is astonishing on the one hand because now she's got to sing louder now now she's got to sing a low d which is ridiculously low um which just again shows the amazing skill that she has but it also might indicate that she's taking this arrangement somewhere totally different to the to the original so maybe she's going to do a key change or maybe she's going to go higher in the melody or something but also interesting didn't you think that she started a cappella, so she must have had a pitch reference from somewhere. They played a pitch in her ear or something uh, into her in ear monitors. Or maybe she has perfect pitch, I don't know. But she just started, I'm trying to hold my breath. Very breathy. And then she went, let it stay. You know, very breathy. Very intimate. Always when somebody sings a cappella, or when somebody sings very soft and breathy, it draws the listener in. It makes you lean in and go, what? What, what, what are you doing there? You know? Um, so, And she did both. She started a cappella, and it was soft and breathy, and I think it worked to get people's attention. And now on Take My Hand, the um, the instrumentation starts. Take my hand Will you share this with me? 
Very breathy. All the shine of a thousand spotlights. All the stars we steal from the night sky will never be enough. Never be enough for me. Never, never, never. Okay, sorry, it's hard to find a place to stop. Yeah, um, take my hand, share this with me, because darling, without you. All of that was so breathy, but not just breathy. Also, my hand, share this with me. She, she chopped it up. She didn't sing, take my hand. Will you share this with me? She didn't sing it as longer phrases as she normally does. Right? So that's what good singers can do. They have the option to do it way differently. They have tools. So that's fine. I don't love that as much. I realize she's in a moment where she has to do it differently, etc. But for the song, I don't love that it's so choppy. Not so legato as, it, as I think the music wants. Um, and then she went, all the shine of a thousand spotlights with a much fuller sound. That means her vocal folds are more connected, a more connected sound, a more resonant sound. And then she still went, never be enough. She still went in and out like a little flip, tiny little flip on never be on the verb never. Um, it's too low for me to do it. And then she went. Never enough, really big, as we are used to in that part of the song. And then she went for me with the E vowel. That's the word me. And then for me, may, which is a dip song. May, uh, and an E, two vowels. For me, even more, bigger. So she changes the vowel. That's a choice she makes. She can sing it straight E vowel, as the word is, which is my preference. Um, but she's changing the vowel. It's more dramatic. It's powerful. It's a powerful part of her range. She's opening it up. It's more this way and that way. The opening, her tongue is lower. Um, and it creates a very specific kind of sound. So that's what makes people cheer, as you can hear. Again. So I just quickly want to say, she did two very poppy things in that little section, especially there at the end as well. May, like a little twirl like that. It's, it's poppy. It's not music theatery. And also in the previous phrase, she did a beautiful, quick little run, um, which is nice. But again, did you hear the me, which become may? Yeah, but big voice, oh my gosh. When she goes to that place, you can't, most people can't feel anything other than cheering, you know, like it, it touches you, it connects with you. So let's see how it ends. She must be close to the end of it now.
<laughs> well, Mel B is on her feet, so that means it's beautiful. Not necessarily. Um, yeah, look, I think that th th there was the reason <laughs> for the semitone lower than the original because now, <clears throat> excuse me, now she made a key change into the original key, which is A flat. So she had all the high A flats, uh, E flats. And then she went, for me, for me, for me. She slid. Is that the word? She slided. She glissandoed into that high E flat. And that was a beautiful moment. That's when Mel went, what? Uh, not just because of the the power and the tone, but I think also because it was all one breath, a very long notes, and she, she, we thought she was done by then. And then she did that. So I think that was clever. I think it was beautiful. And then ending with a very gentle, for me, sort of a breathy tone again, and an E vowel, not an A. So yeah, obviously, and I, I, I often say this when we talk about singers on Got Talent shows, and even idols, and even The Voice, they have to chop a song up and put it into 90 seconds or two minutes or whatever. Um, I didn't love that she went back to all the stars, lights of a thousand spotlights. Um, I felt that that the return to that bit was to me like, ugh, I don't think it's time to go back there again, but that's maybe a little bit subjective, right? That's how I feel musically. Um, but it was to build and to do the key change and all of that. So I think she sang her heart out. I think she really went for it. She seems really connected to the song um, again, which you might go, duh, she sang the song originally. Yeah, but to do it differently every time, but to still be connected to it, it's a challenge. So I think she was connected to the song. Um, she sang well, as she always does. Well, not always. I can't say that categorically, but she sang as well as I've always as I've always heard her sing. Um, and again, she looks beautiful. She's beautiful to look at when she performs. So, yeah, good job. Um, somebody made a comment on my other analysis of her, of which I told you about in the beginning of um, Over the Rainbow, and said it's a pity she didn't make it to the final. So yeah, we, we can't see the show here in South Africa, but I assumed based on that comment that she was not voted through to the final, so that is a shame. But I think the platform that Britain's Got Talent first and then America's Got Talent, um, Fantasy League has given her is definitely going to help her. And I wish her all the best. I hope she, I hope she chooses to sing the right stuff. I don't know if she writes her own music. I think she should, or she sh should find other writers to collaborate with and write songs for her own voice. And maybe in this sort of almost crossover pop music theatre genre, I don't know. Um, if she makes, if she finds the right music to sing, she could have a career, in my opinion. So, wishing her all the best. Thank you for spending the time with me. And until we do that again, please take care of yourself. Just before you go, let me just remind you that you can actually book a session with me, a one-on-one, -on -one, through my Patreon. You can go there and check it out. Um, or you can send me a message through the website. And then also, if you want to chat with me, why not visit our Discord server? The links to all of that is in the description below.